My name is Lisa, and I'm one of the members of Group 5. We're here today to talk to you about the state of the Canadian, Canadian confectionery industry. Before we jump into such riveting topics, such as the history and current state of the industry, along with a value chain and business model, I just wanted to give you an example of a local company that's been widely known as Canada's oldest confectionery company. It was founded in 1873 by James and Gilbert Ganong, right here in St. Stephen, New Brunswick, and it's still based here to this day. In 2000, the city was even named Canada's, Canada's Chocolate Town. Ganong's long history is showcased here at the Chocolate Museum. In 1999, it was created so that people could go in to this old factory and take a look around. So you can imagine what it's been through. It's definitely seen lots of uh, innovations, such as the first wrapped chocolate bar in 1910. And 10 years later, they named it the Palomine Bar, which we can still buy today. They also created the first heart-shaped chocolate candy box, and of course, chicken bones, which you can still get here in Canada. Ganong exports its products to the UK and the US, and it has an online website which you can purchase products as well. But of course, like any other confectionery company in Canada, it faces some challenges and some opportunities for growth. Hopefully at the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of the state of the Canadian confectionery industry as a whole, and you can visualize some of those um, things that we're going to talk about and apply it here to Ganong. The major category in the confectionery industry, which are includes chocolate, gum, and candy. Chocolate represented the biggest segmentation in the category, which with the 55 percent share in the well. In the value of the high been growth in the week, 6% in the last four years. Chocolate in the mainly regional business where consumers seek a particular test in the, each market. The top five products account for the 50% of the global market, and there is a score of the regionalization. Gum, with the 14% share in confectionery sales, is the fastest growing segment at 7%, led by innovation and the marketing. This is the most uh, consolidated segment with the top two players. Gun travel well and a well-run global businesses can generate a good eco economy of the scale. Candy is the most uh, fragment fragmented uh, confectionery segment with the proliferation of local brand and the growth around 4%. The top five players represent only a quarter of, of global confectionery sales. Even more, chocolate products are divided into the three categories, box chocolate and chocolate bar, and the novelties. Box and novelties chocolate are seasonal and tend to be sold primarily around Christmas, Valentine, and Easter. Those give the original product as brand sensitive and product's name usually carry the sense of the nostalgia, which drive the a consumer to purchase one brand over another. Chocolate bar sales are stinging over the whole year. Finally, I would like to explain how and where the confectionery industry is growing. Sugar candy operation with general scoring and the chocolate operation and product with a variety of products such as hand candy, jelly bean, and the coffee. Profit tends to be higher in the sugar confectionery industry. The sugar confectionery industry was less brand oriented than the chocolate industry, which consumers generally make them purchase choices by the which one more cheaper. However, the sugar free confectionery continue to be the fastest growing market segment, and also in the future, the healthier the chocolate is like the less the cal cal calorie energy bar is going to be more gross in the future. The cost of the raw material, which is the cost of good soap in both sugar and chocolate confectionery sector representing 73% and 85%. The industrial was therefore very vulnerable and a fluctuation in the price and the material and supply. Confectionery companies compete on the basic brand name, specialized product and advertising promotion and cost. With the continued promotion essential for the success of the sector where the majority of the very Dictionary and made they're the super of the moment.
As many industries, the value chain of chocolate industries includes five stages. The first one is growing, that is cocoa farmers. The chocolate industry almost uses 90% of the world cocoa. And the major company plants cocoa is Latin America and the middle of Africa and the south of Asia. The second is Asian. This group of people they buy cocoa from farmers and sell to, com sell to companies. This kind of people responds for three areas. First, first is they provide market information to the farmer and, uh, and then they support the farmer to develop their better, their better technology and they connect the farmer with the company. The third stage is cocoa processing. The cocoa processing is also called grinding. This is the picture of grinding. And uh, this, pro this process is controlled by many larger companies. This kind of larger food processing companies, they provide grinding cocoa with a very lower price. The fourth is chocolate manufacturing. In Canada, the chocolate manufacturing is a lower profit and uh, incentive inten intense competitive. The, the biggest companies such as Hasbro, Mars, they have a higher market share. The fifth stage is retailer and uh, distributing. The customer consume chocolates with three reasons. The first is chocolate for home market. This kind of product like this. And uh, the second is snacking market. This market is almost 28% of the whole market. And uh, the product like this. And in those two markets, the price of chocolate is lower and the taste is very important. People usually go to grocery store for those two kinds of products. So the consolidating become major effective in this market. The third product is gift chocolate product, like this. This kind of product has a very beautiful packaging. So the price is higher. Usually this kind of product sells in independent retail stores. Today's confectionery company is on a rough road these days. In an industry where 4 or 5% market share seems to be quite successful, the, com the competition is quite fierce. And it's no wonder why companies are closing their doors. Due to the competitive nature of the industry, companies have no choice but to cut, co to cut costs by either outsourcing, uh, cutting back on some of their brands, or sadly even closing some of the factories. Although competition isn't the only thing these companies have to worry about, consumer mindsets are always changing. People want healthier products, they're straying away from buying chocolate or candy treats. As for Canadian confectionery specifically, a big problem lies within the high Canadian dollar. Because any company who exports their product to find alternative ways to cut their costs or end up facing their demise. U.S. confectioners are taking advantage of this by being able to offer products cheaper to Canadians. And it's an uncertain time for confectionery industries. While large companies can mostly be tough through the, har the harshness, small companies are having trouble. So now that we've covered the ins and outs of the Canadian confectionery industry, it's easy to see that it's facing some changes. It seems to be moving towards a more health-conscious product line, and it's and is focusing primarily on specialty chocolates and candies, rather than having that as its main focus. This can all be applied to our main example of Ganong, and as we've learned throughout this presentation, they seem to be pushing their sun-kissed fruit snacks rather than their tra traditional chocolates and candies.